Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, neurologist from Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting and fascinating topic, the beginning of neurology and the neural tube defects. The beginning of neurology and the neural tube defects. In fact, today we are going to talk about the start of the nervous system, the beginning of the nervous system. So when actually does the nervous system begin to form in the embryo? It is about the third week from about the 19 days of the life of the embryo, the nervous tissue begins to form. To understand neural tube defects, we need to understand the process of the beginning of the neurology and the nervous system. We have the ectoderm. In fact, the nervous system starts to form with the thickening of the ectoderm to form the neural plate. So the first point, the first step in the formation of the nervous system is the thickening of the ectoderm to form the neural plate. The neural plate then starts folding itself and a groove forms and then later the neural plate is converted into the neural tube. The neural tube begins to form about the third to fourth week. So in the neural tube we have the neural canal below which we have the notochord and the endoderm. So the first step in the formation of the nervous system is the thickening of the ectoderm to form the neural plate and then the neural plate into the neural tube. Then the neural tube starts closing starting from the midline going upwards and downwards the anterior pore and the posterior pore. So once the anterior pore closes we have a good development of the brain and once the posterior pore closes we have the good development of the spinal cord. Failure of the closure of the anterior pore leads to the defective formation of the brain example encephalocele and the failure of closure of the posterior pole leads to the mal development of the spinal cord like spinal dysraphism. So this is the beginning of the formation of the nervous tissue at about the third week. The thickening of the ectoderm, neural plate, the neural tube, the anterior pore closure leading to the good formation of the brain the posterior pore closure leading to the good formation of the spinal cord. If these pores do not close, there is a persistent communication of the amniotic fluid and the spinal canal and we can detect the presence of the alpha fetoprotein, the increased levels of the alpha fetoprotein in the amniotic fluid or the serum by which we can say that the person is having neural tube defects. Right. The neural tube is primarily concerned with the formation of the nervous system. It basically contains the three layers. The innermost layer which is known as ependymal layer which gives rise to the ventricle of the brain and the central canal of the spinal cord. We have the intermediate mantle layer which gives rise to the grey matter and the outermost marginal layer which gives rise to the white matter. The new relation, the closure of the tube, as I said in the beginning of my lecture, the closure of the tube, which we call as new relation, begins to form about the 19th day. It separates the developing nervous system from the ectoderm. So the new relation is the closure of the neural tube and the separation of the tube from the ectoderm. The new relation begins 
near the midpoint of the neural tube and advances towards the anterior port, the cephalic side, whose closure gives rise to the good development of the brain and then posterior or coral neuropore and closure of it which gives rise to a good formation of the spinal cord. The anterior pore and the posterior pores are the last pores to get closed. The neural tube defects, the NTDs, are common congenital malformation that result from the failure of the normal neural tube closure during the early embryogenesis. Neural tube closure is complete by the end of the first month. So it begins at around the 19th day and is almost complete by the end of the one month. So much so that most of the ladies do not even know that they are pregnant. Even before they realize that they are pregnant, the nervous system is, the neural tube is formed by the end of the first month. And sometimes the ladies, they do not even realize that they are pregnant, leave alone the neural tube defects. Right, having understood the basic summary, the startup, now let's go to the details of the neural tube defects. As I said, the neural tube defects can be broadly classified into two types. The upper type, the anterior pore or the encephalocele, where there is a defective formation of the brain. Or the lower type, the posterior pore or the defects concerned with the spinal cord, example spinal dysraphism. So we have the upper type where we have the malformation of the brain and we have the lower type where we have the malformation of the spinal cord. Now let's see the differences between these two. The failure of closure of the anterior pore gives rise to the upper type of the neural tube defects and the failure of the closure of the posterior pore gives rise to the mal development of the lower type or the spinal dysraphism. In the upper type, the brain fails to form well and the lower type it appears to affect the lumbosacral cord the spinal cord the classic example of the upper type of the neural tube defects is anencephaly where there is malformation of the brain and the example of the lower type of the neural tube defect is the myelomeningocele the clinical fact features in the anterior pore defects or the upper type defects there will be polyhydramniosis there will be polyhydramniosis accumulation of fluid because they have difficulty in swallowing since they have difficulty in swallowing because of the defective formation of the swallowing center there's accumulation of the fluid which is known as polyhydramniosis encephaloceles are the herniation of the brain tissue through a brain defect in the skull. This is about the anterior pore. When we come to the posterior pore or the lower type, the classic types are the spinal, spina bifida occulta, the meningocele, the myelomeningocele, and the myeloschisis or rachiscisis. In the spina bifida occulta, there is no herniation. There is no herniation that is associated with the tuft of hair and a dimple of skin at the level of the bony defect. So it's a very mild form. In fact, we do not see an increase of alpha beta protein in spina bifida occulta. Then we have meningocele where the meninges are protruded but not the neural tube tissues. Then we have milo meningocele where the spinal cord and the meninges protrude. And finally, we have the myeloschisis, a severe form of the spinal cord defect where there is an unfused neural tube. Unfused neural tube. So, we have it's a severe form of the lower type of neural tube defect. But what is the pathogenesis of the neural tube defects? What is the pathogenesis of neural tube defects? Neuropores, we have the anterior pore and the posterior pore, they fail to fuse by the fourth week of development. So when the anterior pore fails to fuse, the brain does not develop well and there is extrusion of the amniotic fluid and alpha fetoprotein. We can detect the presence of alpha fetoprotein. Likewise, when the posterior pore does not fuse, 
we have the defects in the spinal cord. So basically neural tube defects are because of the failure of closure of the pores. Anterior pore brain defects, posterior pore spinal cord defects. There is persistent connection therefore between the amniotic fluid and the spinal canal and therefore we see an increased levels of alpha fetoprotein in the amniotic fluid or the serum because it does not close so it comes out so we see an increased level of alpha fetoprotein in the amniotic fluid or the serum and sometimes there is an increase in, in ACE levels also in amniotic fluid. Usually they are associated with diatus mentis or folic acid deficiency in pregnancy. There is an overactivation of sonic head hop has been implicated in the development of the neural tube defects. The mother of the affected children may have elevated levels of plasma homocysteine levels. Women on anti-epileptic drugs, especially sodium valproate, are increasingly predisposed to the development of neural tube defects. And therefore, women with pregnancy, we discourage them from using the sodium valproate as an anti-epileptic drug because it is teratogenic, especially it causes neural tube defects because of folic acid deficiency. So the safe anti-epileptic drug in pregnancy with epilepsy is levetiracetam. We have anterior pore defects and posterior pore defects. Sometimes there can be combined anterior pore and posterior pore defects like Arnold Chiari malformation. And uh, neural tube defects happen even before the completion of the first one. So sometimes the women, even before they realize that they are pregnant, they may be having uh, fetus with neural tube defects. So the neural tube, the formation of the neural tube from the neural plate and the thickening of the ectoderm, this is the beginning of the formation of the nervous tissue and the neurology. So the beginning of neurology starts with the thickening of the ectoderm and formation of neural tube and if there is small formation of neural tube it gives rise to neural tube defects in fact neural defect neural tube defects are the are the most beginning or the most early development or mal development of the nervous tissue so the most early or the earliest mal development or early diseases of the nervous system are the neural tube defects and they occur between around 19 to 26 days. So the earliest neural tube defects, the earliest nervous tissue defects are the neural tube defects. So we need to understand the beginning of the neurology. It is this, the thickening of the ectoderm giving rise to neural plate and neural tube is the beginning of the neurology. So unless we understand these details, the neuroembryology, the neurodevelopmental process, we will not be able to appreciate the defects like anencephaly, spinal bifida and other neural tube defects. I hope you have enjoyed listening to my lecture. If you have any suggestions or comments, kindly post on to my YouTube channel. But please like and subscribe my YouTube channel, Dr. Sinwas Medical Concepts and my FB page, Dr. Sinwas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.